Did you ever wonder what this mask is all about? Today we're going to explore alternative color masks. It's TK Friday. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Well, it's TK Friday again. Today we're going to look at alternative color masks. Now we've looked at infinity color masks before, but today we're going to look at this mask. It's the black and white adjustment layer mask and it's really powerful for making color adjustments but it's a unique mask and we're going to delve into it today and kind of explore its possibilities now i have uh three different images to work on i have this image this image here and this one and by the time we're done i think you're going to have a pretty good grasp of this black and white adjustment layer mask and don't let that uh term black and white adjustment layer mask uh throw you because it is for making very specific color adjustments as you'll see here very shortly if you don't own any of tony kuiper's products yet like his panels or videos you can uh, click on my affiliate link in the description below use my promo code dk15 save 15 percent off any panel or video it helps my channel out and um, i really appreciate that and you get some extra savings on these products and it's really good so it'll take you to this uh, web page where you can purchase panels and videos and now let's get started I want to start today by sharing two different facts with you. Up on the screen, I have two notes. Infinity color masks select only color and no neutrals. So only things that are in color will be selected by the mask. Now, a black and white adjustment layer mask selects light, neutrals, and specified colors. So it's a little different than the Infinity Color Mask. You can select any color you want along with light neutrals. And that's what makes it unique. On this first example image, what I want to do is darken this mountain here and also the mountain in the water. Now it's got, it has like this red color to it. So it should be pretty easy to select with an infinity color mask. So let me show you the infinity color mask first. Now let's come up to this icon and click right here and let's select some of these red tones in here. Click OK and you can see it's selected the reds very nicely in the mountain and in the reflection in the water here. But let me go ahead and zoom in and show you where this is gonna fail. Okay, first off, let's look at the original image and we can click this icon right here to see the original image. What I wanna do is darken this whole mountain, but I also wanna bring down these lights, you know, the snow on the mountain, these light areas here as well. I want those to come down with, with the mountain, okay? So, as you can see here, See these black areas? These are these are the white areas and they are not selected. So that's rather interesting, isn't it? So let's take a look again. See this, concentrate in this light area right here. Now let me go ahead and show you the mask. You see how that's all black? So that will not be selected. So that's a problem. We can't really use this particular infinity color mask for this situation. So let me go ahead and X out of this and let me go ahead and resize uh, the image. Now, see this uh, icon here? You can click this and that'll resize your image. Let's try the alternative color mask, which is this guy right here. So let's click it. Now it's gonna give you a black and white adjustment layer. And this is your adjustment here. And by the way, these other adjustments, curves, levels, and brightness, they're really not needed. The only adjustment you need to work with here is the black and white adjustment. And if you have the TK8 beta panel, you'll know that Tony has created it without these other layers here. So he's not even using these layers. They're really not needed. We just need this black and white adjustment. So let's go ahead and here's what we need to do. We want to select the reds in the mountain, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to lighten up our reds. So let's start to lighten up our reds. Now, we don't want to go too far and get we'll lose all our feathering and we don't want to do that. We won't get a really good selection. So we can lighten up our reds. Let's lighten up our reds a little bit. There's also going to be some yellows in there. So we can lighten up the yellows in there. But you'll notice these areas right in here. Let me go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and zoom in so we can really see this. So let's use this icon so we can see the original image. Okay, so look at this snow again right here. See the snow? Now let's go back to the mask. You can see it's selected now. So now we've corrected some of the problem. 
We're not done yet. We got to keep working on this mask here. So we have the mountain selected pretty well now. So let's go ahead and see if we can drop out the sky by pulling our blues back. We'll pull our blues back a good bit and let's pull our cyans back. And I can, yeah, actually get those back the whole way here. But now you'll notice we have our mountain selected very well. Let me fit this back on the screen again. Now let's go ahead and output this mask to a, just a simple curves adjustment layer. I'm just going to put it on a curves adjustment layer, change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And just like that, here's the before and here's the after. And you notice we brought down the mountain and also the light snow of the mountain came down with it and it did a great job. And if you felt that was too strong of a adjustment, you can pull back on the opacity if you need to. Okay. But for now, I'm just going to leave it up to 100%, but you get the point. By the way, up on the screen right now is a couple interesting facts. Whenever you use a screen blend mode with any adjustment layer, it gives you the same result as pulling up the midtones on a curves adjustment. Also, when you use a multiply blend mode on any adjustment layer, it gives you the same result as pulling down the midtones on a curves adjustment. So it's a very handy way of darkening your images using multiply blend modes and lightening your images by using screen blend modes. And you can see here I have a curves adjustment with no adjustment on it, but I have that curves adjustment layer set to a multiply blend mode. And again, it's just the same as if I would put this in normal and just pull down on that curve. You get the same result. I'm gonna go ahead and reset that and change this back to multiply. But that's why I do that. It's just quicker, but it gives you the same result. And here's another tip, whether you're using the TK7 combo panel or the CX panel, take advantage of these blend mode uh, icons here. Whenever you click one of these icons, the uh, blend mode for your layer will change. And so that's really a very nice time saver. The takeaway here is we couldn't use the infinity color mask to select color, but we were able to use that alternative color mask. This guy right here, the black and white adjustment layer mask. And we were able to select not only the color, but light neutrals, which really is what we needed for this image. Let's move on to the next image. We have this image and I want to darken the sky on this image and I'm going to use the black and white adjustment layer mask. The reason I want to use that mask is because I want to bring down this sky. I just want to like reduce its brightness a little bit, but I also want to reduce the brightness of not only the blue part of the sky, but also the clouds themselves to give it a nice natural darkening. Let's go ahead and click this icon again and we'll set up our black and white adjustment layer mask. So we want the sky. So let's lighten up the sky a little bit. Let me go to blues first. Now remember, I don't want to go the whole way over and just turn that sky to white. I want to maintain some nice feathering in here between the sky, blue parts of the sky and the clouds. Let's play with our cyan a little bit. And maybe somewhere right around there. Now let's go ahead and there's a lot of red in here so we can pull the reds back and deselect the reds and also the yellows. We can pull that way back. And uh, any greens in here, not much happening in the greens. But now this area down in here, I got some light uh, parts in the mask here, so I wanna get rid of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this brush icon. That's gonna give me a black brush. And you'll notice up here I have this new layer here, which is actually what I'll be painting on. But let's go ahead and Let's just paint with black paint. I have 100% opacity and flow. I'm just going to come right like this. I'm going to miss the edge of the mountain here. But we'll get some nice feathering along the edge. It'll be good, just like that. And the rest, I'm just going to go ahead and paint all black. I'm going to go ahead and make my brush larger so we can just paint it quicker, right down through here. And we'll just paint off all that area right there. And that's all we need to do. And as you can see, I missed a couple little spots if you look right in here. No big deal. They're not even gonna affect anything. There, I pretty much fixed it. There's a spot up in here I missed. Let's see, did I get it? Yeah, I got it. Not a big deal, that wouldn't have really mattered, but let's go ahead and get it anyway. So now let's output this to, this time I think I'm gonna use a brightness contrast adjustment layer. 
I'm not going to use a blend mode, but there's my mask here. And by the way, if you ever want to see what your mask looks like, when you have a layer selected, you can click this icon on your combo panel or your CX panel. Just click that. You can see what your mask looks like. Click it again. You'll see the image back. So what I want to do is I want to maintain contrast in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my contrast somewhat here just to maintain contrast in the clouds. And then I want to pull back on the brightness. And I'm going to over exaggerate this so you can really see it. Okay, something like that. And do I want a little more contrast? Maybe just a tiny bit more contrast. So here is the before and here is the after. So just like that, very simple. I have one more image and it's going to be a little bit more challenging. And that is this image right here. Because what I want to do in this image is I want to uh, bring out some contrast in these flowers, but the entire flower, the light area, as well as the uh, reds in the flower. And I only want to select, select the flowers themselves, not the stems, not the sky. And I also want to bring down the light areas of the flowers because I think I can bring a little bit more detail. If, you, if I zoom in here, there's some nice detail in here, in this area here. So if I darken this up a little bit, I'll bring out some of that detail, I believe, but, I'll, but I still need to maintain contrast and give this image a little bit of pop, especially just in the, on the flowers themselves, but nowhere else. But, you know, are we up to the challenge here? Let me go ahead and click this to fit the screen. And let's see what we can do here. We're going to use a black and white adjustment layer mask again. So let's go ahead and click this and let's start adjusting this. And let me say this one more time, the beauty of using this black and white adjustment layer mask for selecting color is because it can select light neutrals, which I do have here in the flowers, these light neutrals and color as well. So it's going to be perfect. I'm going to start by moving this red slider to the right to select these reds. Now, I don't want to go too crazy here, so I need to maintain some detail in these reds here. So I can't go too crazy, but let me go up to maybe right around there. And uh, let me see here. Uh, let me try. Yeah, I'm going to pull the yellows back. So I have a lot of yellows in those stems. I need to darken those stems. And the greens as well. I need to darken the greens on those stems. Let me see if I can get my yellows back a little bit more. I got to be careful because there's some yellows up here in the flower. So I, got, I, I don't want to go too crazy there. But maybe somewhere right around there. Now, I'm going to take my blues and pull those a whole way back. And I'm also going to pull my cyans a whole way back. And check it out. I've selected these flowers. So I got the red in the flower. I got the lights in the flower. And that's basically all I need to do. So what I'm going to do next is output this to a brightness contrast adjustment layer. And now it's just a simple matter of making some adjustments. So I want to add some contrast. So let me go ahead and take my contrast and give myself a good bit of contrast. And let me see. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can really see. Let's just focus on this flower here. Now you'll notice when I add that contrast, I'm losing some of this detail here. But remember, I want to add some pop to this, to these flowers. So now I'm going to take the brightness and pull the brightness back a little bit. But you notice now I got that detail coming back in here and I'm still getting a lot of nice contrast but let's take a look here is the before and here is the after isn't that cool now let's go ahead and fit the screen I'm going to click this fit the screen icon let's take a look here's the before and here's the after isn't that nice I got some nice pop on these flowers now I'm going to work on this sky too but before I do that let me show you uh, how the infinity color mask wouldn't have worked here so let me go ahead and shut this layer off Let's go ahead and get an, an infinity color mask. And if I were to select red here, because remember, it, it only works with color. If I select a red here and click OK, it only selects a red. See, it disregards neutrals. So that wouldn't have worked. All right. So let me go ahead and X out of here. But I can, however, use this infinity color mask for the sky here. So let me go ahead and turn this uh, adjustment I just made back on to add pop to the flowers. Let's grab ourselves an infinity color mask. Let's select the sky and I'll click OK on the color picker. And let's go ahead and lighten up my selection a good bit here. And I'm going to put that on a hue saturation layer and just add a little bit of saturation to that sky. So let me go ahead and drag this to the right. 
And as you can see, now I can't go too crazy here because if you look up here and you say, well, that looks really good, but look down here, I'm getting some weird things happening down here. So you can't go too crazy with that adjustment, but I'm going to add a little bit of that saturation and right around there looks good. So here's the before and here's the after. Can you see that? A nice, a nice look. Now, if I option click on my first layer, the background layer, Here's the image without any adjustments, and here it is with the adjustments that I made. But now I've added some pop, and I've added some nice saturation to the sky. So today it was alternative color mask. Now we have the infinity color mask, and we also have the black and white adjustment layer mask, which we use for these images today, because these images had uh, neutral light neutrals that we needed to select along with colors and that is where the black and white adjustment layer mask shines now when you just want to pick colors then the affinity color mask is perfect but when you need to select light neutrals and colors as well then you need the black and white adjustment layer mask and it really helped us in all of these images today well, there you go, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, and please leave comments and questions. That it would be great if you would do that. And I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then... Happy editing.